at just 23, Ryan Simpkins is breaking all the rules on and off set. Earlier, we spoke to Ryan about their new movie and being non-binary in Hollywood. That's today's DBL Spotlight. We are here with Ryan Simpkins, one of the stars of the new Netflix trilogy, Fear Street. Yes, so the film takes place in Shadyside and it's been haunted for centuries. This show is right up my alley and I love the name Shadyside. I want to visit. Now, Ryan, tell us about Fear Street. There it is. It's not just a diary, it's a map. I mean, Fear Street is so exciting because it takes the great horror genre and just takes all of these tropes we know and love and flips them all on their head. We have all of these fun, dorky outcast characters who would normally be killed in like the first 20 minutes, um, who are our heroes. And it's just like a really fun cast of kids and everyone's so good and, and they're really excited. You're playing like a punk fuel character named Alice in Fear Street Part Two, 1978. Who are you channeling to get to where you need to in that character? Alice is so much fun. I studied a lot of like 1970s early punk. Yes. I, I watched a bunch of Joan Jett performances, a little bit of Debbie Harry, mm -hmm. some David Bowie as well, just to be like, who would this crazy chaotic teenage girl want to be? Ryan, you identify as non-binary. So if a viewer didn't know what non-binary was, how would you explain it to them? Non-binary is an identity that exists outside the binaries of like male and female, you know, but non-binary is sort of this really large term that can mean a million things to a million different people. But for me personally, it means I, I have a little bit of masculinity and a little bit of femininity within me. You're an advocate for LGBTQ rights. Do you wish growing up that you had more role models? Maybe you did, did you not? I luckily, my mom, um, when I was pretty young, had a conversation with me sort of being like some, you know, boys are attracted to boys and girls are attracted to girls. So with queerness from a young age, I was aware of it, which I'm really lucky to be. But the gender conversation just wasn't happening, at least not in my town when I was growing up. Before you jump in, Al, this is as a parent, I just, you know, I, I want to learn, right? And if there's any viewers out there that are watching that feel like that their child is struggling with their gender identity, Ryan, what advice could you give them to make sure that their child feels empowered, seen, heard? I mean, the best thing to do is listen and try to facilitate however you can that expression. You know, it's, it's an ever-changing thing with every person, you know, some days someone may feel like one thing and then the next day they may feel like another. So you just have to be patient and grow with them. I think it's a, it's an interesting thing for maybe us to embrace that uh, gender is, is fluid. And I think the fact that you're able to talk about this so articulately is really helping a lot of people your age and my age. So really quickly, is there, are there any misconceptions that you could clear up for people about being non-binary? So one thing I would say is I agree, like it's not a new thing. You see it in the 70s with our icons like David Bowie or, or like with Prince. But since the beginning of time, you know, you, you look back in history and there are plenty of gender non-conforming people mm. throughout there. Are, there are indigenous two-spirit people. I would say another big misconception is that non-binary people have to be androgynous. I find a lot of people tried to make non-binary sort of a third binary which is the opposite point of the whole gender you know <laughs> ryan we are fans thank you for spending time with us here at dbl and to our viewers you can watch fear street streaming on netflix now we'll be right back thanks ryan thanks ryan thanks.